Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're having a hard time going to the gym and staying consistent, this is the video for you. I was always that girl who I would go to the gym for a couple of weeks and then I would stop. And I would never really be consistent because I dreaded going to the gym. Going to work was already a tiring in and of itself and then I have to go to the gym. And that was my mindset for the longest time. And this led me to the road of excuses. For example, I would get my period that day. I'll be like, nah, I'm not going to the gym. I got my period. That's a valid reason. No, I'm not feeling so well. Like, I'm so tired. I'm not feeling so well. So I'll skip the gym today because I have to take care of my body and I have to listen to my body. And my body says, no gym today. And that was the path that I treaded on for the longest time. It led me to going to the gym for a couple months and then stopping for a couple months. And in the last log of 2023, I decided to stop that pattern. I realized it was a pattern of mine and I wanted to do something to break it, something different. And I really wanted to share it with anybody struggling. Try these tips out. Maybe it'll change your perspective. My first step is set realistic goals. I know you've heard this a ton of times, but you have to understand what realistic is to you versus realistic to other people. Some people have access to nutritionists, to dietitians, to private chefs, to private trainers. And if you don't have the same access to that, your goals might look a little different. Your timeline might look a little different. So don't compare your goals with other people's goals. You're on two different lifelines. Focus on your lifeline. I used to be the type of person who, when there was a party coming up, I go to the gym thinking it's gonna make a difference. Well, I thought wrong. I'm just girl mathing and saying, if I go to the gym five times a week, every week for the next three months, I'm gonna fit in that dress. And the thing is I break that, I'm not consistent because I just overexert right off the bat. And the thing I did differently this time around is I listen to my body. I try not to listen to her excuses. I just try to listen to how she feels. For example, this time around, I haven't gone to the gym for a while, so I would do 15 minutes treadmill. I know 15 minutes is not a lot, but that was what I was comfortable with and it wasn't daunting. I don't associate going to the gym with something tiring and daunting after work. Then the day after that, I would do something like 20 minutes and then 30 and then I would mix it up. I'd do 15 on a treadmill, 15 on a Stairmaster. I couldn't do 15 on a Stairmaster my first time. I would do five. I would start on a low level and then eventually I would make it a high level. And this is just cardio. I listened to my body. After a couple of days of just doing cardio, I realized, you know what? I think I'm ready to do push ups. Let's do some push ups. Let's do some dumbbell bent over rolls. Is that how you say it? Dumbbell bent over rolls? That's basically my point. Start slow and then build up. Don't rush, be realistic with your goals, and keep yourself accountable. Which leads to my second tip, dedicate a time slot for the gym. So you have a week ahead of you, and for the most part, our weeks kind of look the same. For me, I have a 9 to 5 every Monday to Friday. So I say, okay, this is my timeline. I'm gonna go to the gym Monday, Wednesday, Friday, for example, then I'll go to the gym Sunday. And try to stick to it. That's the hard part, sticking to your schedule. Think of it like having a date with yourself. If somebody invites you to something, you can go and just schedule your gym on the next day or you can even say can we reschedule because I have a prior appointment with myself which is true set these days as days for yourself even just for the first couple months to build that habit they say it takes 21 days to build a habit try it for 21 days see what happens you don't have to do it every single day you can do it every other day and then build as you progress the idea is not making it daunting so that you associate it with something that you don't want to do and so when you go to the gym you're just like oh my gosh i don't want to go to the gym no we're trying to remove that perspective from our minds and associate going to the gym with something positive number three write your gym notes down i know I know, I never used to do this. I thought it was just so like vain and unnecessary and time consuming. I, I hated that idea. But I said, you know what, let's try it. It's something I've never done before. Let's try it, who knows what will happen. I'm just using the notes app on my phone and I just put, okay, what day is it today? How much did I weigh? Because let's be real, that's also something that I wanna see go down. I set a column for cardio and then a column for weights and I just put in what I did that day. And you know what? It's actually working. Seeing my progress, seeing how I'm doing every other day really helps me challenge myself and makes me feel proud of myself for having been able to do that much. Like looking back at my notes, I started December 17th. 
I was 69 kilograms and I only did 50 minutes of treadmill. That's it. And now I'm doing 10 minutes on the Stairmaster. Like I could never even do two minutes on a Stairmaster. I'm doing 10 minutes high intensity on the treadmill. And then I'm doing push-ups, elevated push-ups, dumbbell bend over rolls, tricep extensions. You get it. You can see your progress. My weight's going down, your endurance going up. I don't know about you, but that really encourages me to push myself even more. So maybe there is something about writing down what you did in the gym. Just saying. Number four, reward yourself. So after after you go to the gym, reward yourself with something that you like. For example, after going to the gym, maybe get a coffee, maybe get a matcha, maybe get a protein shake. I prefer getting a matcha. I have a matcha tin and I do it myself sometimes. That just associates, again, gym with something you like. So that in your mind, it's like you're training yourself, like you're your own dog. You're telling yourself, you go to the gym, you get a prize, you get a treat. And that's great. That honestly has helped me so much to build the gym habit because I'm actually excited to get my reward after. Now, I don't reward myself all the time, but in the moments that I do, I feel really, really good and I'm excited to go to the gym the next time because I'm excited to get my reward. Number five, get a gym buddy. You've heard this before, I'm sure, but if you haven't tried it, you can try it. I personally have not done that. I'm trying to get my sister on it, but it's kind of hard because she's just starting out as well. And to be honest, I like working out by myself. I don't like working out with other people. And I'm an introvert that way. I like to think that I'm my own gym buddy. So if it works for you, then try to get a gym buddy. What might help is also looking for a trainer if you can afford it. Find a trainer to keep you in check. Or if you have a friend who's really into the gym, maybe ask them if they could encourage you just for a couple of weeks until you're able to build that habit. Number six, this one I really like and I just started this a couple weeks ago, is choose a series to watch when you're in the gym and only when you're in the gym. The series I chose is The Morning Show with Jennifer Aniston and Reese Witherspoon. I just randomly thought, hey, let's just watch this while I'm on the gym and it's working. The rule is you can't watch the show if you're not working out. And that really helps me want to go to the gym because I want to know what happens next. Number seven, apps. I personally have tried this. I tried Center at one point and for the first part, I actually really enjoyed it and I was actually keeping tabs on what I was doing because every day they have something for you and you can choose your own workouts but eventually I kind of dwindled because the workouts were a little hard and I knew that I couldn't do it very well and I felt awkward and so I eventually stopped doing it but if you want to do it I will have some apps linked down below for you to try now I haven't personally tried any of these apps except center but it's something you can try if you don't want to go to the gym like go to a physical gym and you have space at home you can try these you can also try YouTube I'll be linking some fitness youtubers down below in the description mad fitness and chloe ting are some of the most popular ones i actually tried chloe ting's challenge like she has those 30 day challenge things and I kind of gave up after a while because I'm not a person who likes to work out at home. If you are, give it a try. Go to Chloe Ting or Mad Fitness YouTube channel. I will be linking them down below in the description. They have some challenges and what you can do is you can build your own playlist. I tried building mine. I just didn't follow through. But that's something that you can try out. Who knows? It might work for you. Number eight, the gym that you choose is crucial. Here's the thing. When I go to the gym, I know it's going to be men, women, mix of people. And I've always been the type of person Person who was very self-conscious and I didn't like wearing tight clothes. I didn't like wearing sleeveless tops. All these things really made me feel so self-conscious and like the world is looking at me and judging me as I'm doing my squats incorrectly. And I really, really, really hated it. And I think that's one of the reasons why I was very discouraged to go to the gym because I felt like I wasn't doing things properly. I felt like people were staring at me. I felt like people were judging me. The environment was just not the best. And it's important to find a gym that has an environment that is comfortable for you, the space that's comfortable for you. And that's what I did. I looked around for a gym. I got the tour. You got a free tour, by the way. So don't be afraid to ask. And then see if you like it. See how the aura is, how the people are. If you like the people working there, get a feel for the vibe and see if it's something that you would like to return to every week. Because if not, then your mind will just discourage you to go. And we have to break that habit. Number nine, set your intention 
intentions and create a vision board. Now I'm in the process of creating a video wherein I'm creating my own vision board for 2024. And yes, I know it's already January and I haven't started yet, but I'm getting to it. A vision board can be a physical board. It can be pictures online. It can be a video that inspires you. For me, I actually went and started looking at my pictures and my videos from years before when I was in a fitter state. And I am just shocked comparing how I looked then to how I look now. I looked so much healthier then. I looked happier. I looked radiant. And now I'm just like dreary and sad. 2023 was a hard year, okay? And so looking at these pictures of me back then when I was at my ideal weight kind of inspired me to get back there and start this health journey. So besides being inspired by other people and printing out their pictures, I'm actually inspired by myself from when I was in my ideal weight. If this does not apply to you, you can go and go on Pinterest, find something that inspires you to be fit, understand what is driving you to become fit. Is it a dress that you want to wear? Is it the feeling of being fit? Is it just overall health, not having to pant every time you climb the stairs? Or is it just plain vanity? That's okay. What I don't like about society is we look down upon people who use vanity as an inspiration. It's okay. Lady Gaga herself admitted that she just loves fame and look where she is now. If that inspires you, use it. If it inspires you to get to a goal that's positive for you, then use it. I know it's a controversial thing, but it's reality and I think I speak the truth here. Number 10, my last tip, plan a trip months and months in advance. I know, I know, okay, I know. Planning trips means money, it means time, it means commitment. But if you plan a trip in advance, let's say you wanna go to Mexico or you wanna go to Bali, here's my idea behind this concept. You know you're having a trip coming up, you wanna feel good, you wanna look good, you wanna wear that dress like I've always been mentioning in this video. Use this to inspire you to work on yourself. It can also be some kind of reward for yourself for working out and taking care of yourself. You can plan this trip with your friends, you can plan a solo trip even. And you don't have to go so far away. Just plan a trip that you know is gonna let you get out of your box a little bit. And the thing is, it doesn't have to be this year. It can be in a year's time. So remember my first step where we have to set our goals and make it realistic? Planning a trip in a year is a realistic goal. Planning a trip in six months, maybe not so realistic depending again on your lifestyle. For example, you're gonna start a gym tomorrow. So on the same day, whatever tomorrow is for you, the next year, plan the trip. And then when that finally comes, you can revisit how far you've come along to get to where you are. So there you have it. Those are my 10 tips to being consistent in the gym. I hope you found it helpful. And if you have any suggestions or tips to stay consistent in the gym as well, please leave them in the comments down below. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, I appreciate you subscribing, liking this video, digging that notification bell to be informed when I upload. And please don't forget to check out my video here, 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 and here. Have a good one. And I hope to see you in my next one. Bye.